Well, my interest began about uh, oh, 23 years ago when I was active in the air, aerospace industry. Our chief test pilot, Max Stanley, who had had a tremendous amount of previous aircraft experience, was making a trip back from, from uh, Albuquerque to Los Angeles, to Hawthorne, to our plant there. And he and two very knowledgeable uh, observers saw a UFO which could not be explained by any of the techniques that we knew then or know now. They were able to keep this object under observation for a period of about 20 minutes. And of course, with people of that character, the chance of any hoax or any m misleading statements or anything of this sort just simply doesn't exist. These were top technicians who had the opportunity firsthand. Personally, I have never seen a UFO or had any contact with anyone who has other than Mr. Stanley. But I had complete and have complete confidence in him, and I know what he reported was actually there. Well, starting with that interest then, it became a natural thing to read up on what I could here and there and the other place, and my belief in the fact that there are UFOs, so-called, has been reinforced over the years by what I've read. A great incentive to believe, uh, which occurred in 1950. So that's about the size of it. Well, you know, it really seems like these UFOs move in very strange patterns. They're able to hover, almost standing still, and then zoom off. It seems as if they must be utilizing some other form of energy that perhaps we don't know about. Now, in terms of our present, you know, aerodynamic technology, do you feel that we're utilizing all that we can? The aircraft are thoroughly modern and up-to-date based on our present knowledge. But there is absolutely no question in the world but what there is not only a source of power of which we're not acquainted, but there is also a source of propulsion which we're not acquainted. Because the UFO seem to have unlimited power, which perhaps could we might obtain if we develop uh, uh, fusion. Fusion power uh, is more or less goes on forever. Fission that we're using now utilizes the, the elements to a certain extent, but fusion recreates the material that's used. And perhaps a, fuse, a small fusion power plant would give you the power necessary. But the, the propulsion of these UFOs is unique. Their ability to hover, their ability to accelerate very rapidly, their ability to, to move at very high speeds, very much higher than anything that we have achieved even with our supersonic aircraft. All of these things and particularly interestingly without sonic booms and the things that we don't like about our supersonic aircraft all of these things indicate a type of propulsion which is unique different than anything we know anything about and which would be of tremendous value if we could develop it and use it and that's the reason i feel with a number of others who have studied it that it is a subject which deserves the highest type of scientific study and at an early date the advantages to be gained are perfectly enormous well, since you have designed a number of aircraft since the early days and throughout the war, such as the flying wing, would you say that flying saucers are aerodynamically sound? I don't believe they are aerodynamically powered. I don't think that there is any aerodynamic uh, particular value to their shapes. They come in a number of different shapes, all the way from a flattened sort of pumpkin shape, flattened sphere like a pumpkin, to elongated sort of cigar shapes, to the well-known flying saucer shape which consists of a saucer with another inverted on the top of it and uh, this type uh, counts for about 50 percent but the flight characteristics of all of the different shapes are similar in other all, in other words they've all been seen to accelerate rapidly to be able to stop to be able to turn rapidly to be able to hover at will anywhere they want to go so that the type of suspension propulsion whatever it is that enables them to behave in the fashion they do is something that we simply have no technical background for at the present time. Mr. Northrop, how do you feel about the general ridicule that people are accorded that are into the study or believe in UFOs? Well, there's great, there has been a great deal of ridicule directed to the subject of UFOs, and probably rightly so to a certain extent, because probably 85 to 90 percent of the sightings of UFOs are not really unidentified flying objects. In other words, there is an answer to approximately 90% of the sightings that are made which correspond to the present techniques that we have. There remains a 10% to 15% number 
which cannot be explained by any of our present science. So that there's a natural reason to a certain extent for ridicule. And don't forget that the Wright brothers and uh, Fulton and everybody, the man who invented the first steam engine, all were ridiculed. They didn't want to leave the horses or the buggies or anything of that sort. So it's a natural thing for humans to ridicule something that they don't understand. But the subject of UFOs has, has pulled in the serious study of many highly competent technical people. Many doctors of science have studied and fully believed in UFOs. And the number of these is sufficiently great and their reputation is sufficiently high so that they're really, in my humble estimation, there's no room left for ridicule. It just doesn't belong in this subject if we're talking about genuine UFOs. And how long do you feel it will be before we are flying in UFOs? <laughs> well, this probably is a $64 question without a question of a doubt. I think it depends a great deal on how rapidly we take them seriously and how soon we really set up scientific, uh, a scientific study team to work on the subject. We have uh, records of thousands and thousands of sightings and those can be correlated and arranged in a suitable fashion by the use of modern computers so that we can probably learn a great deal that we don't understand now simply by that type of a study. Whether that would lead us to a solution of what the power is and what the propulsion method is, I simply don't know. It can be anywhere from 10 years to 10,000, as far as I can see right now. But I do believe that it's something that is realistic, something that is tremendously valued, something that we ought to study as soon and as rigorously as it can possibly be arranged for.